Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. My name is Alex Delgado and I'm with the Fresno cohort at SUM. I chose SUM because I'm a youth pastor and God told me that I can't lead where I've never been. And I have students, we encourage our students to you know, preach, pray, prophesy. We encourage them to join the ministry, but oftentimes we send them out. And there's something about being able to keep them locally for the mission. And not only that, it is affordable. SUM has been an amazing experience for me personally. If you're a student thinking about SUM, this is something that you need to be a part of. It is a movement across the world that is happening. And I personally invite you to join. Family Church, what's going on? Good to see you out there today and online. We are super excited about this message today. We are in a brand new series on missions, uh, living life on mission both near and far. Um, I also want to remind you about not just the college, but also tonight we have a comedy show right here in this room. You do not want to miss out. Pastor Tim will tell you a little bit more about that, I'm sure, throughout the message today. But you don't want to miss it. It's a free comedy concert, comedy show tonight. It's going to be lots of fun. Get back here tonight, okay? Uh, but before we do that, before anything else happens, I want to take a moment and introduce our guest today. Uh, Tim and I have known each other for 37, 38 years. Our dads actually did ministry together. They founded new missions in Haiti. Uh, and, and the story is just amazing. We're going to, I don't want to be a spoiler on any of this information. Uh, but pa Pastor Tim and I have been personal friends for many, many years, growing up together in the church world. Um, one of the guys that keeps in contact with me weekly, monthly, uh, we do life together. Um, I'm excited about his message today. He's not just a great presenter, but he's a great leader, great father, great husband. He's an inspiration to me. He's one of those guys that I follow online and it inspires me to work a little bit harder every single day because of the things that he challenges. And I think that he's gonna challenge you today. Would you welcome to the stage Tim to tell us, please? Yes. Put your hands together for Pastor Mike. Yes. Wow, it is an honor to be with you this morning. And I have to tell you, today is a very one of a kind day here in New York, those of you joining us online, uh, I believe today's message from my heart is something that I've been so passionately praying for for you. And last night, I'm having dinner at Pastor Mike and Cynthia's house, and I get a text message on my phone that an Amazon package arrived back in Florida. Anybody? You're someplace else and you get the text message? Yeah, because they invented that one-click buy. Did you know that? They patented it. And then Apple had to license it from them. When Apple opened up the iTunes store, they wanted a one-click buy. They had to license the one-click technology from Amazon. Because Amazon innovated and invented the future. But then over at Apple, we know we have upgrades coming, right? How many of you got an upgrade coming? You, know? you got an upgrade coming, why? Because Apple is inventing the future. They're innovating. And I'm here today to say the church will be the most innovative place on the planet because we have the best product available to consumers because there are three types of people, friends. I'm just gonna dive right in. Church Online, pour that espresso because I'm waking up. They're the person or the people that resist change. People resist change. That's the first kind of person. There's the second kind of person, the person that invents change. But then the third is, all of us will experience change. Friends, it's coming to you. Whether you invented it or you resisted it, you will experience, say it with me, 
change. So my question to us today is, what is the fastest way to change the world? What is the fastest way to change the world? We have these massive brands with with massive budgets, but we have a king and a kingdom that is greater and stronger, amen? Because some trust in chariots, some in horses, amen? But friends, today we are a part of the fastest way to change the world because more than ever the world is searching for peace, love, and joy, and they don't know where to find it. There's people that have doubt and insecurity and depression, and they don't know how to find the antidote to that, the solution to their needs. So today I want to invite us to be a part of the fastest way to change the world. So I have a question I want us to reflect on this morning. Are you waiting for the world to change? Because again, some people resist change. They're afraid of change, the unknown. Are you waiting for the world to change? Now, we could invite Chris and the band back and rephrase this question to, are you waiting on the world to change? And then we'd have a song stuck in our head, all right? (laughs) See, if you're waiting for the world to change, friends, it's a very passive approach. It's a very sit three rows back and just kind of wait and see what happens. I don't believe the gospel is passive. I don't believe the life of Christ that I reflect upon in scripture was a man who was lazy in his calling. I don't believe that you and I as followers of Christ as a part of family church are supposed to live a life that is not about innovation in the gospel to proclaim it and to live it and to be it, amen? We are to be proactive. If you're waiting for the world to change, friends, it will change without you. You see, the fastest way to change the world is to introduce others to Jesus. The fastest way to change the world is to introduce others to Jesus. And God invites us to be a part of that great mission. And so I have a question I want to invite us all to answer this morning. Is does your life intrigue others? When people see you, do they kind of lean in a little bit and go, something different about that man. Something interesting about that woman. Does your life intrigue others? During the pandemic, Family Church was not passive in their approach to reach the community. Here at your church, you were so intentional and so innovative Did you know that God orchestrated in the heart and the mind of your pastor that pre-COVID technology innovation and upgrades happened here on campus so that when the pandemic hit, church online and video broadcast blew up because, ready for this? You were ready. Let me tell you something. You, You want opportunity in your life or as the world would say, you want luck, get ready and be available. Most people, they don't get ready, and they never find opportunity. Listen, the pitch ain't going to come over your plate unless you've been practicing. That was for somebody. Praise you. That was for free. That's for you. (laughs) You opened up this campus to be a virtual learning center. I interviewed Pastor Mike McKelvey on the New Missions podcast, helping you live life on mission right where you are and wherever you go. And he told me a story. Pastor Mike, it blew my mind. We're, we're interviewing one another from afar. And, and I said, Pastor Mike, dur- during the pandemic, what was something that you had to overcome as a challenge? He goes, Tim, man, we love reaching families in their homes and, and bringing food and feeding them. But, you know, everything shut down. We didn't know how to get to them. So we innovated and we hired out the service via DoorDash. We hired DoorDash to deliver food to families. Talk about a church that says, hey, this ain't a problem. This is an opportunity. We're going to step over it because we're not waiting for the world to change. We're a part of the fastest way to change the world. And we are going to intrigue others. But one thing you all did that made an impact during the pandemic was you were present in people's lives. You see, when you're passive, you hide. When you're waiting... You go sit in the back of the room 
Then you wait for the weather to become perfect. Then you step outside. But no, nightly you did nightly news. You were present in people's lives when there was loneliness and isolation. And you stepped in in that moment because you were proactive as a church family. See, your life does intrigue others. And when does it happen? It happens because of the way that you love and show generosity. See, that makes others curious. The way that you love and show generosity. When I reflect on the ministry and the life-giving fuel of this church, I see a church, Pastor Mike, I see a church that is brave with their love and bold with their generosity. That's who you are as a church family. You are brave with your love and you are bold with your generosity. That causes the world around us to be intrigued. And they begin to look in and go, why do you love me so well? Why are you so generous to my family? Because most of the world is passive and they're sitting back and they're waiting for the world to change. Now Jesus brought this truth alive for us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. And I want you to join me in reading this aloud together this morning. Let's read this together. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, friends, I grew up in church. I'm a recovering preacher's kid, amen? And I used to sing that gospel song, this little light of mine. Come on, sing it with me. I'm gonna let it shine. Then it goes, hide it under a bushel. No. Come on, I can't hear you. Hide it under a bushel. No. Come on, at home, say it with me. Hide it under a bushel. No. Right now in culture, the goal is to mute you. I have a close friend, he has started a network of radio stations in Central Florida. And we talk about the efficiency of their broadcast, and I ask him, how do you know what to play? He goes, Tim, we do a research focus group with our target audience. We put them in a conference room with headphones on and a dial. They turn up what they love, they turn down what they don't love. And that's what the world wants to do to us. Because you know the truth, you know the source of peace, love, and joy. You are part of the fastest way to change the world. And if they can tune you out or shut you off, they do not meet Jesus. And friends, I want my life to intrigue. Jesus made it very clear. Let your light shine. Let it shine and create such an intrigue and culture that you become the change we want to see in the world. You become the innovators of change. See, culture is created and it's caught and it's taught through emulation. Language is learned through emulation. I learned Haitian Creole in Haiti not by reading a book or listening to an audio program, but singing songs in church and listening to Haitians use their language that was God-given to them. I was experienced in it by immersion, friends. And we need to go into culture and become those that intrigue. Does your life intrigue? Second question I want us to reflect on today is we are part of the fastest way to change the world is does your life invite others? Does your life invite others? In 2019, my grandfather, Charlie DiPietro, passed away at 101 years old. 101 Pastor Mike, I'm there at the funeral, and my mom is walking my grandmother down the aisle to come to the casket, and you know they had Timmy over at the keyboard playing the songs before. I jumped up. I had to go see Grandma. I run up to Grandma. I'm helping Grandma to come down to the casket, and my grandmother looks at me and says, I want to take him home with me. You see, friends, they celebrated 80 years of marriage together. They were the longest living married couple in the state of Massachusetts. Boston Globe did a whole report on them. That next week, I'm sitting at my grandmother's house on the couch, you know, squeaking between the plastic and leaning up against the Afghan. You know what I'm talking about? Amen? <laughs> and uh, can I get personal with y'all? I needed to ask grandma a question. 
I'm sitting on the couch with grandma and I pull out my phone and I, I turn on that voice memo app because I knew I wanted to keep this message from grandma. And I said, grandma, tell me, when was it that you made Jesus Lord of your life? And my grandma began to tell, tell me a story of how her family, family of eight was looking for an apartment to rent in the east end of Boston. And they went to this apartment complex and they were touring it and the landlady, Caroline, was there and they were walking around and my grandmother's mom began to tell Caroline how grandma was sick, 14-year-old girl, sick, not feeling well. And Caroline began to express how she was a Christian and she goes to church. And so my great-grandmother turned to the landlady and said, well, if your God is for real, take my daughter Anna to church with you. So at the age of 14, grandma was invited to church. And she told me this story, how she walked down the aisle that day and she knelt and prayed to make Jesus Lord of her life. And she said, Timmy, I stood up and I experienced a joy I never had experienced before. Friends, it gets better. She went back home and she told her mom what happened. And guess what happened? Her mother made a decision to make Jesus Lord of her life. And a year later, her father prayed to make Jesus Lord of her life. Friends, don't underestimate the impact of an invite. Who but knows how you will change the trajectory or the history of a family or the legacy because you invited someone to join you here at Family Church. Don't underestimate the impact of an invite. You see, see, my grandma, she was invited to church at 14 years old. But she passed away in summer 2020. I couldn't fly to Massachusetts for the funeral. I love my grandma. I counted on her praying for me every day. My mom's at her house after the funeral. She texts me. She says, is there anything that you want from grandma's house? Pastor Mike, all I could say to my mom was, I already got everything I could ever hope for. She introduced our family to Jesus. Yeah. Friends. And then my mom was raised in that home, and she met Jesus, and then our family moved to Haiti in 1983 to plant churches and schools. We now have 35 campuses across the island of Hispaniola. We went to villages where there was only voodoo, there was no church, there was no school, there was no well. We drilled countless of wells, churches, schools. Why? Because we understood that the fastest way to change the world is to introduce others to Jesus. Yes. Friends, it gets better. Let me, let me introduce you to the master inviter. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, this very short verse, it says, Come, follow me. Jesus invented the idea of inviting. He was the master inviter. Can you imagine being in the village or on the hillside? Can, can, just go there with me for a moment. And Jesus says, Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish. Say it with me, for people. Say it with me, people. One more time, people. Friends, that's the power of the invite. We are invited to go invite. Does your life invite others? The third question I want us to reflect on today as we become a part of the fastest way to change the world is this question, does your life involve others? And friends, this is an important question for me right now because we're in a culture now that has become so connected, we're disconnected. We have so many friends, but our loneliness has risen. And then the pandemic comes and all of a sudden we're afraid and isolated and retreating and we're, we're, we're actually pulling back on some of our face-to-face -face time. So involving others is not really the priority no more. Now it's more avoiding. Let that simmer for a moment. A avoiding others. I mean, I've been there. I've, I've, been at the, I've been at the grocery store and, you know, you avoid them. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Let's be honest, right? You avoid them. 
Come on, are you, are you with me? I'm not lying to you, I'm just being honest with you. I avoid them. I'm guilty, I confess this morning at family church. Go on the record and say, Tim Detellis is avoiding people. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. But does my life involve? Does my life involve others? I got a text message from a neighbor. I need some help. Vicki and I are selling the house. They came and did the survey. We have a problem. What's up, Kevin? Can you get some guys to come over and help us move the fence? I'm like, what, what, are you, what are you talking about, move the fence? <laughs> he goes, the fence is 14 feet into the neighbor's yard, and we need to move it back into our yard before closing, or they won't sign. Okay. So like a good neighbor, I called some other neighbors and said, go help Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I gathered some guys, seven of us went over to Kevin's house early one morning on a Saturday. We started moving that fence, it's that four board horse fence, you gotta rip the boards off, pull up the post, move it over. We move it over the 14 feet, you know. It was a little squiggly, but we got it done. We celebrated at the end of that by going out for ribs, can I get a witness, amen? But our life involved one another. I have done so much in the last six years to involve my neighbors and engage my neighbors. Friends, on the last Tuesday of the month, we host Guys Night Out. We go out for pizza or wings or bowling, and we come together. Friends, I can't say this enough, that life is better and stronger together. In Haiti, they taught me this phrase, ensemble. Repeat after me, ensemble. One more time. Ensemble. Ensemble means together in Haitian Creole. You see, in Haiti, they could not survive without one another. You see, you know what the enemy of growth is for our lives? It's comfort. We're not hurting enough that we don't need nobody. I don't need to call the neighbor to move the fence, and I'll do it myself. Friends, we got to become uncomfortable and we need to involve others. We need to, we need to do life together. You need to be in a connect group. You need to connect with one another. Why? Because God did not intend for us to do life alone because life is better and stronger together. Does your life involve others? I want to turn to a scripture in Matthew chapter 8, 28 verse 19. It's known as the Great Commission, Jesus' last speech. This is his TED Talk. <laughs> Mike, this is, this is the Jesus TED Talk. This is probably the, the initial TED Talk ever. And your pastor did a fabulous job last week unpacking this. So I'm gonna skim it. But it says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Therefore, say it with me, go. Hey, did that sound kind of passive to you? Did that sound kind of like sit back, chill out, relax? Does, that, does this great commission sound pretty passive? Therefore, go and make disciples. At New Missions, we say it this way. Together, we are making disciples because discipleship is the true measurement of success. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then watch this. And teaching them to obey. Talk about teaching. Your church, what you all do here with leadership development and teaching, hallelujah, that is an anointed ministry fulfilling this great commission. The way that you teach others, the mentoring, the, the, I won't break the news, but you got stuff coming, bro, that is, is huge on fulfilling this great commission. And then he says, and surely I am with you always. Say it with me. Surely I am with you how often? Yeah, only on the sunny days, right? Only on the good days. Only on when the days are going the way you planned. Let me tell you something. We have experienced change. Historic change. But I can rest assured that Jesus is still with me. So no matter what change you're going through, no matter what uncertainty or concern that your neighbors are facing, your coworkers are questioning, Jesus is with you always as you fulfill this commission, as you step into their lives and you intrigue them and you invite them and you involve them, 
by the way, you gotta go back and listen to Pastor Mike's message last week. I, I learned what participles are and imperatives are, and I learned that go clean the kitchen by mopping the floor, taking out the trash, and washing. Get it? Washing. You gotta go back and hear the message. Did y'all get that? Some of them, you could tell who was watching last week and who wasn't. That was good. I got one yes over there. Good job. Go back and listen to it. But let me tell you, this great commission is a lifestyle. It's not optional. It is our culture. It is our DNA. It is who we are. We go to preach the gospel and make disciples. Friends, it is who we are. It's a non-negotiable. It's an imperative, friend. It's an imperative. Can I say that again? It's an imperative. Amen? Why is this so important? I believe that we exist to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the fastest way to change the world. That's why we exist I don't exist to go out for ribs with my neighbors. I don't, I don't exist to go out for wings, although we do. I don't, go, I don't exist to go out bowling with them, although we do, and I stink at bowling. I do that to involve them to build relationship and trust and have influence. Sorry to break the mics. To have influence in their lives. Why? Because I want my life to intrigue them. I want my life to invite them. I, I, I want my life to involve them. Because that's what Jesus did. How did Jesus disciple? Side by side. He gave us the model. He gave us the template. <laughs> he gave us the game book, he, the, the playbook. He, he, he did life side by side with people. He invited them, come, follow me. Let's go side by side. Let's take this journey together. You know, he invited you to belong before he asked you, who do you say I am? To see what you believed. I have come to the conclusion I do not judge my neighbors because they don't know God. What? Did you hear that? I don't judge my neighbors. They should not be loving because the Bible teaches me that God is love. <laughs> Those that know God know love. Where there is no God, there's chaos. So, I just love them, and I, I, I invite them and involve them, and then eventually they, they will believe. I had a neighbor pray to make Jesus Lord of his life in my backyard, and all I kept thinking is, Mike, I didn't really do anything that magical except feed the guy, you know, <laughs> just kept feeding him. But I want you to see the difference this makes for my neighbor in the backyard. There was a transformation in his life. Because Jesus does something. He is the fastest way to change the world. This is what Jesus does in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It reads, therefore, read it with me, if anyone, that's non-discriminatory, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. Yeah. See, friends, I'm a... I wrote the book, Good Neighbors Make Great Neighborhoods. But what I have found is that I can be good and that can be easy and that can be nice. And you can be good. But transformation happens when they find God through a relationship with Jesus. That's when the change happens. So what is the fastest way to change the world? Is to introduce others to Jesus. What about you today? Do you want to be a part of the fastest way to change the world? Or, or are, are you waiting for the world to change? Are you taking a passive approach? Or will you be proactive with the gospel? Are you going to intrigue? Are you going to invite? Are you going to involve others? See, back at uh, Amazon... Jeff Bezos decided to give people a title to get their job done right. You know the title he gave them? Missionary. At Amazon, they call you a missionary when you have 
an intense focus and determination to fulfill the mission you've been asked to fulfill. And over at Apple, this one messed me up, man. Messed me up. They had a chief evangelist. Chief evangelist at Apple to propagate the world with their brand to get people to be invited into their ecosystem. A chief evangelist at Apple. Friends, we all work for the same CEO. Breaking news. Online, you, you, you and all, we all, I'll come back and preach that message. But we, we, all, we all work for the same CEO. And he's inviting us this morning to go be his missionary and to be his evangelist. By the way that we intrigue, by the way that we invite, and by the way that we involve. And so this morning, I want to invite us all to stand right where you are. And I want to pray over you this morning a prayer of commissioning, as this great commission was given from Jesus, that we would go from here as the missionaries and the evangelists. Next week, Pastor Mike is going to give you a life-changing message on evangelism. Don't miss it. It's going to be the most practical way you can apply evangelism in your everyday life. Friends, this journey is about being a part of the fastest way to change the world. And more than ever, the world needs more peace, love, and joy. And I'm not going to wait for the world to change, friends. I'm not going to be the person that resists change. I want to be the person that invents change. And I want to be the person that experiences the change of Jesus in my life. I need Jesus. What about you? Have you ever made a decision for Jesus if you're watching online or in this room this morning? Have you ever made a decision? I don't want you to miss out on this. See, I've been praying this prayer from Psalm 34, 8 for you today. Psalm 34, 8 says, taste, I'm Italian, so when I say taste, I get excited, okay? Taste and see that the Lord is good. You need Jesus this morning, we want to pray with you. If you're watching online, just type in amen. Just type in amen. We want to come alongside you in this journey. Jesus will change your life. Friends, if you're in this room this morning and you want to say yes to Jesus, today's your day. But it gets better. Watch this. In that, in that verse in Psalm 34, 8, you know what it says after you taste? It says blessed. Everyone say with me, blessed. blessed. One more time. Blessed. blessed. A little bit louder. Come on. Blessed. blessed. Blessed is the one who takes refuge. Oh, hey, in this, in this day and age, friends, how many of you need a place to take refuge? Come on now. I need Jesus in my life because I need a place to take refuge. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Come on. That's where I want to be in my life. So right now in this place, I want to pray. If you're saying yes to Jesus, just type in amen online. If you're in this room this morning, we want to hear from you. Come on out to the lobby and let's talk together. Let's grow together. We have a gift for you, don't we? And that name of that book is Starting, Starting Point. Come on by and grab that for you. We want to help put you on this path of the fastest way to change the world. As Jesus comes into your life and brings that peace and that love and that joy. So let's pray together right now as we go from here. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my dear friends here this morning at Family Church. For this divine appointment, for this day in history. That we can go from here, not passive, but proactive. That we can become the influencers in culture. As our lives intrigue, as our lives invite, and as our lives involve, that we may fulfill this great commission and be a part of the fastest way to change the world, and that is to introduce others to your son, Jesus. So God, thank you for this invite that we are a part of this family, this spiritual lineage today at Family Church. So God, send us from here. We're honored, we're humble to be your missionaries and your evangelists for your glory. And all God's people said. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. 
you can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.